Hi, everybody, and welcome to Be In The Know, Table Games and More. I'm Benny Mancino, your host, sometimes known as the B-Man. Tonight, I have a very, very special guest. My guest runs the most innovative company in all of table games. I, I would say so. You know, uh, I'm not just blowing smoke at you, John, but but your your company has changed changed the industry, and, and you will continue to change the industry. So, John Conley, welcome to Be In The Know. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. So, so let me give you a little history of me and Interblock. And so in, in 2016, I went to work for this company called Jack Entertainment. You may have heard about them. Uh, and they uh, they had a very interesting leader. Dan Gilbert was just a, a visionary. For those of you who may not know who Dan Gilbert is, he's the owner of Rocket Mortgage. He's the Cavs owner. Back in the law, Braun days, they won the championship. But Dan was a visionary. Some somewhat like, like I think you are, John. And uh, a visionary can envision the future and turn it into reality. So he loved the IB product and uh, the stadium concept so much that we installed it in every property. I ended up being the corporate vice president. We had it in Greektown. We had it in uh, Cincinnati. We had it in Cleveland. And uh, so, you know, he called the product, for, you know, internally we called it Synergy because it brought a, uh, I finally brought together, you know, tables and electronic games. So that's how I got in, in, introduced to uh, uh, Interblock. So I was watching an interview you did in 2015. And I think that's just right after you took over uh, Interblock. And they asked you to make some predictions on the future. And you made a couple of predictions. You said that, you know, that the growth of uh, ETGs would just continue to, to move forward. And you also said there would be a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Well, you were right on both accounts, right? Including your company. So you just was recently purchased by Oak Tree Financial. And I think I'm saying that right. Yep. So, so how does that change your business or inner block as, as we move forward, John? Well, I mean, Oak Tree, Oak Tree Capital is, is um, one of the largest private equity firms in the world. So it obviously gives us the resources we need to continue to innovate. Um, we're looking at uh, aggressively and I think finally going to the online space. I've been holding back uh, for several years trying to keep up with the organic growth in the traditional casino sector. But I think you'll see us by the end of this year coming out with some some very innovative concepts um, in the online world. So having a big private equity partner such as Oak Tree Capital gives you the capital, no pun intended, that you need to to expand and invest and and really help move the industry forward and compete. So it's been fantastic. So do you have any idea how, how many units you have uh, North America? Uh, it changes by the day, uh, you know, if we're lucky enough, it keeps increasing. But I think on a global scale, we're somewhere around 15,000 plus seats on lease. As far as seats uh, installed, we do sell in various parts of the world historically. So due to the sale component, um, you know, I'm sure we're in excess of probably 50 to 60,000 seats globally. So John, I'm an operator. So, I mean, I look at things a little bit different than you do. And, but, but I see uh, ETGs as, as a future of table games. I mean, there's just no doubt that, you know, you see these, this uh, uh, rise that iGaming has had in just a few small jurisdictions. We're just talking a handful. And the growth is something well beyond table games has ever thought of having. Uh, it, it's just exponential, it's, it's crazy, you know, it's crazy. And now you're going to get into a, a, a situation where all your new gamers are going to find their first experience probably online on, on iGaming. Now, what happens when you bring that that new gamer into a brick and mortar, right? And I think that's where you're you're going to find the your ETGs will lend the brick and mortar operator a, a leg up, right? If if they if it's there's something there that you don't understand that you've never witnessed before, then you'd be a little bit intimidated by the regular table. But the ETG will be a, a definitely a good segue into both. And I think ultimately. That, that ETGs will, you know, 20 years from now, you know, if I was still here, I would think I'd walk in a casino and I'd see predominantly the floor would be, the retail floor especially will be made up of ETGs, smart pits, and, and 
And, you know, and you always get the argument of, well, people like to play with chips. They like to have money. But we know as a <laughs> fact, well, if you look at the growth on online, they got no problem playing without chips. They got no problem playing without cards. And I just don't I don't see that as a stumbling block. Do you? Well, I, I, you know, I, I tell people, you know, once upon a time, there was someone that said, I'm going to I'm going to remove coins from slot machines. And I'm sure they were told they were crazy. And here we are today with Tito, right? Ticket in, ticket out. And to your point, there's there's hundreds of millions of people a year that wager online without chips. And and I think um, I think it's the future. Um, so I'm, I'm in line with you. I, I think we're trending in that direction. And, and we're having a, a terrible problem, John, in the industry, especially, you know, uh, Las Vegas, maybe not as much. But when you get out into the birds and you get out into the regionals, uh, we can't find skilled labor. We can't find skilled floormen. We, we can't find skilled dealers. And we're, we're on a constant battle of people who point out and we're, we got a, a, like a revolving door of people. So when you got to find somebody who knows how to calculate every, uh, every pay table and every side bet, and even sometimes counting to 21 can be a struggle. And now, you know, we're going to talk about it later, but with your, uh, your smart pit concept, that, that all goes away. And, and, and even some of the surveillance that we, we now currently must have to protect these gains in a big way goes away. Is that the way you see it? I think it's evolutionary, right? I, I think, you know, if, if I take a step back for a second, and I think 2015, essentially electronic table games was a mechanical roulette um, sitting in the middle of a slot floor. And that was the definition of electronic table gaming, with the exception maybe of Macau at that time. And what we've learned from 2015 to 2024, much like the slot industry, you know, when you walk into a casino, people say, well, why is there so many doggone different types of slots? Well, because there's that many different types of demographics, different types of player appeal you need to service, whether it be steppers, video, high denom, low denom, poker, kino. Um, so what we found with electronic table games is very similar, is that there is a lot of different demographics that require a lot of different types of play action on blackjack, craps, roulette, baccarat, etc. So we've evolved that way, and, and you know, hence the the stadiums you were, you were referencing at Jack Entertainment is one distribution method. We have standalones, like I mentioned, the mechanical products, mechanical roulettes. Most recently, we had the Universal Cabinet, which is a single player concept with a love seat. And it's taken off thousands of seats uh, that are complementary, different player. And when, I, when we came out of COVID, the smart pit originated very simply. Um, when we came out of COVID, I wasn't sure how many players were going to continue to play electronic table games or go back to the traditional tables. We were very fortunate that a, a wide range of people continued to play ETGs. But we also saw, you know, hundreds of thousands of players go back to traditional live table games and casinos. And I said, if we're going to be as Interblock synergistic or be synonymous with table game innovation, we need to start paying attention to the traditional table game pits which we hadn't. And, you know, really the last major, major innovation for a traditional table game pit was the shuffler quarter century ago or more. So we, we sat down and we really took our, our best minds in the company and said, what can we do to really what we call lay a technology umbrella, put a, an umbrella of technology on a pit to help those dealers become more competitive to online gaming, to other forms of technology invading the traditional casino space. And by doing that, we, we created our own tables, as crazy as that sounds. Um, and we, we incorporated a, a new level of technology that allows dealers to generate infinitely more handle, uh, increase house advantage or hold, um, better customer service, no collusion, uh, higher level of security, rating of players, and hence you have the smart pit. And that's and that's really the next chapter, I think, in Interblock's evolution of, of table game technology. Yeah, well, I, uh, I, I'm i very fascinated. I seen the uh, smart pit uh, at, at GTE. And let, let me ask you something here. Well, you, you mentioned a few minutes ago about your, your move into the iGaming. 
Now, that can, it, with the brand as famous and as recognizable as, as Interblock, it's bound to happen, right? I mean, it's it's bound to happen. But is that going to be a balancing act for you, John, with, uh, you know, trying to, you know, enter into the uh, iGaming, uh, but yet keep the brick and mortars happy? So the answer is, is yes, which is exactly, you kind of teed me up nicely there. I have to thank you for that. So the answer is it's absolutely a balancing act. And for that reason, we formed a separate company. So Oak Tree Capital and I, we formed a separate company called A Wager. And that company has a separate group of very talented online executives and individuals that will be taking Interblocks content and bringing it online for us. That way I don't distract all the innovation and organic growth happening on the casino side. Oh, that's awesome. So let me ask you about a couple other things as an operator that really uh, interests me. You know, I've been wanting tournaments on interblock games for a decade. I, mean, I think not quite maybe in a decade. Well, since 16. When are we going to see tournaments? The official release of tournaments will be April of this year. So in 60 days. So Plus. will we will we have most of the games or all the games or? You will have uh, you will have roulette, blackjack, and baccarat. Oh, that's that's excellent. I, I think there's a I think there's a big market for a baccarat tournaments uh, during the week, at, especially at them facilities where the Asian gaming is uh, you know, actually ro robust. You know. Yeah, to your point, we're launching the Bach tournament um, in the next couple of months at Resorts World New York in oh. uh, you know Queens for the Asian players, and they're going to do a Bach tournament there. Oh, that, that's awesome. So you're also uh, uh, dabbling in class two and historical horse racing. Is that is that close? Yeah, you know, it's funny you said I just had a meeting about that this morning. So we formed a very, uh, a very big strategic partnership with Churchill. Um, they have about 80 percent market penetration on HHR. And we've been working closely with them and we'll launch the uh, the roulette product within HHR facilities. Um, primarily, you know, Kentucky and Virginia to start um, by May, May timeframe. We'll come out with a roulette and then we'll have blackjack and craps soon thereafter. I would say probably by August, September, we're looking to have the blackjack and craps to market. Well, well, that's that's very exciting. I mean, that, them, uh, them jurisdictions will go wild over that. I'd be very, very, very cool. Uh, what are we looking forward to? How about class two? Uh, anything uh, cooking there? Yeah, we worked um, with uh, Eclipse, a company out of Atlanta uh, that's well known for class two, and they're going to be releasing a roulette product from Interblock tied to their back end system for the class two markets. And we're expecting that by June, June, July timeframe. So probably end of Q2, beginning of Q3. Okay. So let's get back to the smart pit. That, that's what I'm going to focus on. This is this, we're going to end with this. So the smart pit. Now, if, if I'm wrong, if I can't remember, are they three units, five units? Uh, it's a configurable. It's completely. So there's a craps table, uh -huh. there's a roulette table, and there's blackjack and baccarat tables. So depending on the pit, the size of the pit, we can have uh, a craps, two blackjack tables, a roulette. We could have craps, four blackjack tables, two blackjack, two baccarat. So it's 20 feet wide, 40 feet long is the normal pit size in North America. And we designed our smart pit where you literally pick up an existing pit and you drop a smart pit down in the exact same square footage, uh, except this pit has the technology incorporated. And it's the same dealers come to work. They sit at a table where they used to sit, except now they're sitting at a table or at a craps table or roulette table um, with a whole nother level of technology incorporated. So I guess, I guess what my question was on the blackjack tables, the Baccarat tables, are they configurable to three, five, how many seats can you have at like a normal standard table? So that's a, <laughs> um, so that's a great question and it's an interesting answer. Um, the first blackjack table we designed, which is it's currently in the market now, it's just rolling out on the Las Vegas Strip, is five seats. Um, but in doing more research, the optimal number of blackjack positions, which I never knew, although I'm a blackjack player, is 3.2. So we make the the Optimal profitability for a blackjack table with a dealer, you know, a professional dealer that goes at normal rates, speed, is 3.2 players for handle. And upon hearing that, we came up with the concept that 
perhaps we should do a, a table with three positions rather than five. And I asked a lot of people why there was never a, a three seat blackjack table created. And I've got tons of different answers. Maybe you can find out for me, but at the end of the day, they love the concept. So what we did is we put, uh, we're coming out in June with a three seat blackjack table with three love seats. And we're going to have a 27 inch monitor where now, you know, two people can sit and we can take those three seats and those three monitors and we can split the screen and the three seats can turn into six. So you can split the screen and, you know, my wife and I can both play blackjack sitting next to each other. So she's not standing behind me and squeezing my shoulder like it's time to go home. Um, and we can play together so she can play her side of the screen blackjack. I can play my side of my uh, side of the screen blackjack or I can sit there by myself and just play my own game. So very excited about that, that three seat product uh, coming out, you know, midsummer. You know, yeah. I, I, I heard you mention that on, on, a, on, uh, I think it was another G2E interview you did about the three and the five. And so I got my take on it. Now I'll give you that. So, uh, my two cents, well, I think where you'll go, I think your product will probably end up with eight seats. Now that you're going, to, you're going to think you're talking to the king of time and motion here. So when I preach, you know, and I teach classes to management classes on table games, I talk same thing, you know, about time and motion and hands per hour and utilization. But the thing that slows a blackjack game down, a, uh, a rule, uh, not roulette game, well, a roulette game, yes. Uh, but these carnival games, it's not, it's not the dealer moving the cards. It's the payoffs and the player's decision. Now, well, you're 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 you know you're going to have you know the guy's going to know he's got sixteen. He don't have to think uh, you know for an hour about what his hand is. And the dealer, when he goes to pay it, doesn't have to think about where the guy's got to say it's already paid for him. He can have ten side bets. He can have twenty side bets. So me, when we talk, I talked earlier about labor and how what a struggle it is. Is say you give me uh, eight units per per table, right? Now I stick five of them into a casino. I got the equivalent of eight five seat blackjacks with only five dealers. So I think I think that's where you'll I think you'll find out you'll end up going the other way because you really don't slow the game down with the card movement. It's all all the rest of the thinking that gets them down. And I'm very excited about having a black blackjack game where I can have four side bets and not slow the game down a bit. That that's very 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 exciting to me and i think it's exciting to the player you know players especially at the retail level they want action i mean they would they would they would make a bet on the side in between hands if they could you know it's it it's so sick in this industry you know one time i worked well, i was working at the hard rock las vegas we were in the middle of a, a shoe of baccarat and they were the dealer was shuffling the cards and the two players went into the bathroom now, I, I don't know, I followed him in there. I, I, let's not talk about why I followed him, but I followed him in there. And all of a sudden, I see him throwing stuff up on the on the roof. And I'm like, what are you doing? Well, we're betting on these paper wads. So they they wet these paper wads and they threw them up on the, and whichever one dropped first, the other guy owed the other guy $5,000. Don't ask me why, but people like action. So that, that's my point. They love action. <laughs> I agree. So, uh, so the human interaction factor is what I like too on your smart pit. You know, here in Pennsylvania, we really, uh, it, it used to be until recently, I wrote the ICs to allow a person to be just a hybrid dealer. So now I can, in two days, I can train somebody to jump on a, a hybrid game. Uh, that's very important to me. And a lot of other jurisdictions have them kind of restrictions on hours on how many you know, hours a person has to be trained. I think this opens up a new labor force when, when you can bring somebody in and within 16 hours they're dealing, man, you're in business. For G2E, we had our dealers trained within four hours and they were dealing at G2E at the, the booth and similar experience when we're rolling this out with casinos. I mean, they're even, they're taking, you know, because of labor shortages, as you mentioned, they're able to take a whole new level of, of recruitment and bring in, let's say, less sophisticated dealers than historically seen to be able to deal these products. And quite frankly, the product allows the dealer to spend more time on customer service because they're not counting the chips. You know, the, the, the system's doing the work for them. There's no collusion, there's no overpayments, it's it's automated. So really most of their time is, is spent communicating and trying to work for tips, 
provide that extra level of customer service that that you don't always get uh, in a normal table game. So, so John, I want to tell, uh, talk about a couple of the concerns that when I did this post that that, that came up on some of the comments. Uh, one was, you know, Title Thirty One, and other was, uh, you know, large bets, uh, strange movements. Uh, I, I don't think any of the ETGs, not your ETGs or anybody, uh, right, currently has any kind of built-in alerts. Is that something you guys are working on or, or in R&D to get alerts? Like, because I think about going back to the Ruse project, uh, product, project, product that you just recently acquired, right? They had a serious, uh, a, a, some serious, serious protection issues on the crap game, which if the right kind of alerts were were embedded into that software, there, that nothing would have happened. Yeah, so there's two. So I'll walk you through the smart pit relatively quickly, and please ask questions of what we've done. So starting with the craps, we have a live dice recognition technology, which actually was former military technology that was just released by the Pentagon uh, two years ago. We acquired the technology and are using that exact technology for our live dice recognition, where we recognize the dice in the air before it even hits the table. So the ability of someone to touch those dice or do anything other than um, recognize the dice as they land, it will lock down. Um, so we're using that level of sophistication on live dice recognition, which is on the interblock product. Upon acquiring Aruze last year, we immediately began integrating that same technology to Aruze. So by summer, Aruze will also have the same live dice recognition uh, included within their technology. The second thing we're doing to your point is that we will have email and mobile text verification or pushes if there's any irregular activity on a table and the parameters will be set up by the property. So if the property is like, I wanna know if you know someone wins more than $5,000 or wins more than 10 hands in a row or whatever the parameters are, there'll be a push notification that will come out from the server on the smart pit uh, to those uh, pit bosses, VP of ops, you know, it can go all the way up to the to the owner if, if, if you so choose at a certain level. So craps, um, I will say to you that the live craps products we have with one of the largest operators in the world, um, we just did a report for them uh, this past week and it's the highest occupancy product on the strip, on the east side of the strip, meaning 52% of the time, 14 seats, you can't get a seat, which means over 12 hours a day, seven days a week, all 14 seats are full. So much so it's overflowing and people are sitting in the stadium waiting to get on the product. So live dice of the smart pit itself, player acceptance, occupancy, no chips, technology. I, I predict by the end of this year, there'll be very few properties that have either installed or are about to install a live craps product, either from a Ruse or Interblock with that live dice recognition. The roulette, uh, that product, the premise of that product actually came off of the mechanical dual roulette from Interblock. It's one of the top performing products at MGM from an ETG perspective. And we took that same concept of having two wheels and synchronizing them and provided a dealer with two wheels where the dealer can now spin two roulette balls, uh, not overlapping, synchronized using management workstations on each side of that dealer, prompting them what to do, registering the ball speed in the rim, which creates three times more decisions per hour on a dual roulette wheel. And we can, to your point earlier, we have casinos now installing 12, 16 seats with one dealer. So the ratio of dealer to, to player, which is probably average four, they're now getting up to 12, 16 and getting more handle because there's more decisions per hour. It's, it's, it's making a tremendous amount of money. And I think the dual roulette, live dual roulette will be the next product, the smart pit, <laughs> you're going to hear a lot about it's on the strip in two properties and about to enter several more. And then last but not least, the blackjack that just got installed about four weeks ago with five seats, the three seats coming out this summer with multiple side bets. And again, the players and the, and the dealers are, I think, seeing now the efficiency that technology can make, making their life easier, making the ability to communicate, work for tips more communicate with the players more. Um, so we're seeing that product now trend trend up. So it takes it takes dealers, you know, probably somewhere around 90 days to truly get comfortable with a new type of technology. 
Same we're seeing with the smart pit, but once you get past that 90 days, the handle and net win on these smart pits is going from good to great because everybody's just getting more comfortable, as you can imagine, with something this, this innovative. And I currently have commitments by, I would say, 90% of the largest operators in North America to place an initial smart pit by Q2. And they're going to try it out and let's see what happens. So I think, I think as we get into the end of summer, the numbers will speak for themselves. The players will speak for us. And, and with any luck, the smart pit will be the next chapter in, in ETG evolution. So are you seeing any operators uh, creating a, you know, a synergized pit, like a, a half smart pit, half uh, traditional? Is any, are you seeing anybody trying that? They, they, the answer is yes, we are, because we didn't have the blackjack table available until January. So what a lot of casinos started to do was putting a craps at one end of a pit and the roulette at the other end of the pit. In the middle, they had just traditional blackjack box tables. <clears throat> and it worked quite well. Um, and we still have some demand for that. Um, people saying, you know, we want to start with, you know, craps or craps and roulette. Then we'll have blackjack later. But the majority of the, the new installations coming up are the full the full smart pit itself with all, all three to four games. <clears throat> Uh, another question I was asked, John, was, uh, you know, of course, when you get you're talking about these uh, uh, proprietary game in, uh, companies, they all copy each other. You know, they got, you know, I, I got a version of Cajun stud and that's Mississippi stud here and, and this. And that. So I again, what is 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 Interblock getting ever going to get into the uh, novelty game uh, on on the Interblock units? We are. But the initial field trials, <clears throat> excuse me, they were not that successful. Um, players tried it um, and they didn't come back. They didn't seem to resonate. We even tried poker and poker. <clears throat> there was a lot of demand for poker initially to say the high hold. So we tried a poker game and that again, did not seem at least in a stadium environment to resonate. Now, does that mean having a standalone product of some type? will not attract a different type of player and be successful. I think that's very possible. It's just for right now as Interblock, we spent a lot of our R&D and time focused on the key drivers globally of table games. That's Baccarat, Craps, um, Roulette, and Blackjack. That being said, what's fascinating, at least to us, I think one of the biggest takeaways since G2E <clears throat> is we came out with a crapless Craps and an easy Craps. And those two products, we put them in existing locations, which had our existing craps product from whether it be a Ruse or Interblock, which were doing incredibly well. And we're seeing 30 to 40 percent increase on those products versus a typical craps game, meaning the occupancy and the net win off of easy craps and crapless craps, depending on the part of the country. It, and by the way, what's as important is it did not cannibalize in any way the existing craps units on the floor. It seems to be a new player. And those new players are loving this game because I think it's less intimidating. It's easier to understand. And so you'll see easy craps and crapless craps. I mean, doing 30, 40% higher than a craps game that was doing a thousand bucks a day, which is insane. And that's kind of the new trend. And so much so the demand on those two products is actually taking off right now because word's starting to get out. And one thing I learned is opera, you never say never, right? So I was I was in Vegas, you couldn't give away a, a crapless craps game for except for the stratosphere, right? And then I came east of the Mississippi and they're all over the place. They're just uh, crazy. Now it's went the other way. They're migrating back to the West Coast. And uh, yeah, it's 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 incredible the growth. Of it. So I, I know you gotta run. So I got uh, one more quick question I wanted to get to before uh, we jump off here. Virtual reality, does that play a place somewhere down the line in, in, in these uh, stadium uh, ETG type games? Well, you may not recall, but about 2000 and I think it was 2012, Interblock released what was called a hologram. It was at the G2E show and it was kind of the talk of the show back then. And it was cutting edge technology way, way ahead of its time, but definitely got some excitement where we had holograms dealing and talking to players in stadiums um, again ahead of its time at that point for today i would say that a lot 
of the emphasis is not as much on VR um, for our players, or at least our product roadmap. It's more on AI. We're spending a lot more time, and you'll see at G2E this year, we're going to take a, a very interesting approach to AI and make AI player-centric um, and dealer-centric and really use technology to make the experience um, I would say more custom to each player um, uh, than they've seen before. And, and I think we're, we're in the beginning stages, tip of the iceberg, but we're at least gonna stip our, or dip our toe into the AI front and use, use our infrastructure and, and, and technology on the casino floors to, to accentuate that. Well, it's amazing time, it really is. I can't, uh... I just, you know, it, it happens so fast. You know, we nobody heard of chat GPT four years ago, and now all you hear is the word AI everywhere you turn. And like you said about, uh, you know, saying never say never. I mean, I remember video reels come in in the 90s, and nobody would even play a video reel. You couldn't give away a video reel. Then they started, the iPhone came out, everybody's playing games on their phone. And before you know it, now you can't find a regular old standard reel game unless you're at a, a, a back uh, corner casino at you know, maybe downtown Las Vegas. There might be a couple left there. But, you know, everything's video reels, right? And like you said about ticket in, ticket out. We said, oh, no, they got to hear the clink, clink, clink. And even so much as when they hit, first came out with the Tito's, they had the sound effect there. Clink, yeah. clink, 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 clink. That's yeah. all gone away. That's all gone away. So the chips and that argument, I don't buy that. Let me tell you what. I might be an old dog, but I still don't buy that 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 bone. All right. So anyway, John, I appreciate you coming on, being the no. Uh, I I'm, can't, can't wait to see what you got cooking at, at G2E this coming this fall and you got any last words for our, our viewers out there no i just think you know if you haven't you know the online space uh i think as an industry and i gave a speech of this at g2e i think as the traditional casino industry we need to be aware that new jersey and and michigan are generating more revenue online than they are in the traditional casinos and they've been live for a few years um so there is a demand out there and there's there's millions and millions of players that that are migrating that direction and i think as an industry we have to find a way to bridge that bridge to bring those online players down to the casinos create an environment that is conducive for those players and make sure that when our players that do play in the casinos go home they think of us and i think electronic table games electronic table game technology is a great bridge to protect our existing businesses uh in two ways one our current players give them something that that they can play and when they go home and play with us, hopefully online someday, they recognize and remain loyal to us with our players club cards and and uh, and loyalty programs. But more importantly, or as importantly, those online players that are looking to maybe try a casino can come down and find something they recognize. And, and I think that's a lot of what we're spending our time on as Interblock, creating that level of technology that bridges the gap and supporting supporting the casino industry. We're, we're casino people. We came from the traditional casino world. We're very loyal to the traditional casino world and the dealers and the people and the patrons. And we're gonna do everything we can to make sure we remain competitive and and, um, and, and loyal here in the years to come. So I wanna just thank everybody that's a traditional casino uh, operator and, and player for, uh, for their support. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. If uh, if you're not, you know, later on and a few years from now, if you're not creating a synergy between your online product and your uh, your in-house product, you know, one feeds the other one. You got a tournament here that has to you know, go online to do this and do that. You're the one that's going to be ahead of the uh, ahead of the pack when it's all said and done. John, again, thanks for coming on being an O. Everybody, remember to like, share, subscribe, share this video, tell your friends about it, and we'll catch you on the next being an O.